In this video, we're going to see how to solve a typical application that involves the binomial probability distribution. And so we're going to use a sample problem given here and go through a step-by-step -step methodology uh, and apply it to this sample problem. The problem reads, in the 2013 Jerry's Artorama Art Supplies Catalog, there are 560 pages. Eight of the pages feature signature artists. Suppose we randomly sample 100 pages. Uh, and then there's some probability questions about this. So the first thing we want to do in solving a problem like this is to identify the distribution and make sure that it is a binomial distribution. And you can see that there are three main things we're looking for. Um, one is there should be a fixed number of trials in the experiment. Uh, there should be two possible outcomes to each trial, uh, which we will label success and failure. And um, therefore, those probabilities will add up to one since those are the only two possible outcomes. Uh, and these in trials are independent events. So let's go back to our sample problem and make sure we have these things met. All right, so uh, you notice that it is a discrete problem because the number of pages that we select and the number of pages that feature a signature artist are just whole numbers. So there's a discrete set of data. Um, there's a fixed number of trials because we are only sampling 100 pages. Uh, there are two possible outcomes um, because when you select a page, it either features a signature artist, which we're going to say is, is a success at P, or it does not, and we're going to call that failure. Uh, and then the individual trials are independent. So we randomly sample these pages. Um, it's sampling with replacement, um, and that will be independent events. Okay, let's now identify the three main numbers we'll use in our calculations. Uh, N, P, and X are the variables used, and the meaning of those comes right from that same uh, description of a binomial distribution, right? N is the number of trials in the problem, uh, P is the probability of success, um, and uh, X is the random variable that we're using. So that's actually the number of successes um, out of n. So let's now do that for our problem. Uh, you can see that the number of trials is the number of individuals that we randomly sample in these things. So here n is 100. Uh, the number of successes should usually range from 0 up to n, uh, just counting whole numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, on up to 100. I don't want to list all those, um, but x could be any one of those values uh, because we're selecting 100 pages and uh, you know they could all be ones that feature a signature artist or it could be nothing or it could be some whole number in between. Now with each one of these random selections of a page, the probability of success or probability that we select a uh, page that features a signature artist um, would be 8 out of 560 because it says up there 8 of the pages feature signature artists and there are 560 pages. So the probability of selecting an individual uh, randomly with a certain characteristic is equal to the proportion of individuals in that population that have that characteristic. So we just have 8 out of 560 that does reduce to 1 out of 70 which is an easier way to think about it um, and then if you want to present this to somebody else you can use an approximate percent number of 1.4 percent. And we can go ahead and throw out what Q is um, Q would be um, the complement of this. So, uh, you know, there's eight pages that feature a signature artist. That means there's 552 pages that do not. So 552 out of 560, um, which would be 69 out of 70, or 98.6%. So notice that these add up to 100%. Okay, we've got our three main numbers, and we're now ready to do the next step, which is to create a distribution table and graph. Um, and... The, uh, the table is sometimes called the distribution, and the graph is sometimes called the histogram. And we're going to go ahead and do that with Excel. And these are the basic commands that we're going to use, um, but you can also do this with a TI calculator. So over here in my Excel, I'm going to create a table, and I'm going to have uh, the random variable x in one column. And you just want to do 0, 1, 2, 3. And then Excel will know what you want if you select those and then drag it down. You can get 100 of these pretty quickly. And so there's 100, All right? Those are my different values for x. And then the probability will go next to that and start typing binome 
dist, and you'll see you have some different options here. Uh, and we want the first one. The, the older one uh, will actually work pretty much the same, um, but the newer version has a little uh, decimal point between binome and dist. So you, you can hit tab or select that one. And if you need more information on this function, you can click here or on the things. But it kind of tells you what goes in here. So number s, that's the number of successes. That's just the cell to the left, right? That's x. And the number of trials, that's n, which is 100. Uh, and the probability of success, we saw that was 1 out of 70. So you want to use uh, an exact number there. So you can use a reduced fraction, but don't use that decimal approximation. Um, and then cumulative, for now, we're going to put on false. And then close the parentheses. And we have this. So now we should be able to copy and paste that down, and we get our table. I'm going to go ahead and center those and give them a border to make it look a little nicer. So that is our probability distribution table. And uh, you can see for each of the outcomes what the probability is. Um, and you can see this sort of tapers off pretty quickly. Um, and that once we get past 8, these numbers are very small. Um, and so uh, a lot of these are going to be very close to 0. OK, uh, let's now do the graph. And so with the graph, I'm going to go ahead and select this column here and do insert. And then let's add a column. And you see what happens is it's going to have all those values from you know 1 to 100 and a lot of those just really don't want and all the good information is right there at the beginning, right? So that's not really going to be that helpful. So instead let's just go ahead and grab the first 10 and then we'll get a nicer picture of what is going on, right? And then let's go ahead and make some changes to this graph. So uh, the first change I want to take is, is make this look more like a histogram. So I'm going to right click on the bars, format data series, and then get this gap width just at about like 2%, just so you can see some lines in there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is make sure these are right. So notice this goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and we actually want it to start at 0. So we need to select data and then change the horizontal axis labels by hitting edit there. Um, and then just grab these numbers. Okay, so now the numbers are correct there. And uh, I usually forego a title in favor of some axis labels. So you can add chart elements up here. So let's label the horizontal axis. And let's label the vertical axis. And we've got ourselves a nice little histogram. So the graph for the binomial distribution, or any probability distribution, is often called a histogram. Uh, and I know what you're thinking, doesn't Excel just have a way to quickly make one of these? Um, you know, if, if you try to have Excel do the histogram, look what you end up with. So uh, I feel like it's, I don't know exactly the easy way of, of adjusting these class widths, but it, it never really gives me what I want. So um, the similar problem if you select the whole set of data. So I always do the actual manual with the insert of a column chart um, to get my histograms. But anyway, however you can get a nice looking histogram, and it's okay, I think, to cut off at 10 here. Um, because we really wouldn't be able to see these anyway, and all the good information is here. So this is very much a skewed right distribution, and that does go along with a probability for p that's very close to 0. Um, if, if, if p is close to 1, you're going to get skewed left distribution, and if p is, is 50% or 0.5, um, then it's going to be nice and symmetric. Okay, so we've got this graph and table. We should be able to use that to answer other questions, and that's the next step, is to answer any questions. So Sometimes the tricky part with these is the wording, and they'll say things like at most or at least. Um, so here's kind of a summary of that. Um, at most goes along with um, less than, and then at least goes along with greater than. Um, and so we can use the calculator um, or the TI-84 graphing calculator to uh, get these results. And these are all using different P and N values, so be a little careful with the syntax there. But let's do it for our problem. So we have uh, three probability questions. One is, uh, what's the probability that two pages 
feature signature artist. So that's the probability that the random variable x is exactly equal to 2. And it, for any specific number, we have this right in the table. So you can see for 2, um, it's right there, uh, 0.2466. So with these problems, you probably want to use uh, four decimal places in the decimal version of the probability and then round it there. That's how it's typically done in a statistics class. Um, but it's always nice to also write a, a number you might present to other people. So I'm, I'm including these percent numbers that are a little more rounded just to get a feel for what the number's like. And you might even think of that as like 25%. Okay, so there's one. Uh, the next one, the probability that at most six pages feature signature artist. So that's uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to six. So six is the most it can be. So it's six or less, right? One, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now, so that's a bunch of these here. And so one way to do it is to just grab those, right? And so if I if I select those cells, you can see down here it actually tells you the sum automatically without having to do a calculation. Um, you can do a, a calculation though, and you'd use the same binome disk thing with the number of successes and the trials are the same, and the probability is the same, and but you do this true instead of false at the end. So cumulative means you're adding them all up, and that's what we would be doing for this problem. So that is the same number as adding up all of the ones above it. Uh, so you can get the cumulative value there, which is perfect for these at most or less than type problems. Um, now, look at this next one. Find the probability that more than three pages feature signature artist. So more than three is obviously four up to a hundred. Now, I could definitely highlight all those, um, which isn't that bad, but imagine I had 10,000 of these, right? You may not want to do that. So one thing to keep in mind is that all these probabilities add up to a hundred. So I can always, or uh, if it's a decimal, right, it's a hundred percent, they add up to one. I can grab up to this and zero, one, two, and three, and if I take that total and subtract it from 1, that will also give me the answer, right? So that total is the uh, 0.99944 down here. Uh, again, you can get that using the, the cumulative being true again. Right, and so then I can just subtract that from one. So I can do one minus that. So that is a way to get a hold of these um, using that sort of complement relationship. So I have kind of two ways to get to that. That one might save you a little bit of time. But if you really couldn't, you can always just say more than three. You could you could highlight all of them from four down to a hundred. All right, so that's a good summary of different probabilities you might want to calculate. Um, one last thing to do would be to talk about the mean and standard deviation of this. Um, those are helpful for later on when we talk about uh, proportion-based confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. These things come up. So uh, the mean or expected value of binomial distribution is just the number of trials times the probability of success. And the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. Or remember, n and, or p and q add up to 1. So uh, these are numbers we had identified earlier in P and Q, and we can actually just put those in the formula and calculate them with Excel or a calculator. So in the case of the mean, we have N is 100, and P, remember, there was eight pages out of 560 that featured a signature artist. Um, so we get 1.4. One thing to notice here is that uh, 1.4 rounds essentially to 1, and 1 is the highest probability on this table, right? So that would be the one you would say if I said, look at these, which one would you expect to be most likely? There's a 34% 34 chance of x being 1, so that is the expected value there, right? Um, uh, now, the, the mean of the binomial distribution won't necessarily be one of the things, right? It'll usually be some decimal, but it is usually around um, the, the peak of this thing. Okay, so the standard deviation then um, involves taking the square root of n, which we said is 100, and p, which we said is 8 pages out of 560. Remember, q is the number of pages that don't feature a signature artist, so 552 out of 560. Put that all in the square root, and you get about 1.2. And the, the way to think about the standard deviation is how far do you have to go before you include most of the 
other numbers from the mean. So the, again, the mean is around one, and if I go about one away um, from the mean in both directions, you see that I can get almost all of it there, right? That's actually 83%. Going two standard deviations should give you about 95%, uh, and you can see it does, it says 94.4%. Uh, and then three standard deviations should give you about 99%, and it does. So uh, we'll actually use these formulas later on uh, in the development of the formulas for confidence interval for proportion and hypothesis testing for proportion. Uh, but for now, that is about all we can do with this problem, and you should be able to apply these same techniques to any binomial probability application. Uh, this presentation uh, by Matthew Watts did use a problem taken from Introductory Statistics um, by Barbara Lowski, and it is licensed under CCA 4.0 license by. Thank you.